All right, now let's talk about 22.6 uh, to 22.9, uh, starting with the Hall effect. So the Hall effect is if you've got a conductor, uh, like a wire, and you've got a current flowing through the wire, and you put that current into a magnetic field, the magnetic field is going to cause the electrons to be deflected to one side of the uh, um, conductor, which ends up creating a separation of charge, positive and minus charges, which ends up creating a potential difference in EMF uh, across um, the two ends of the uh, conductor. And the same is true whether it's uh, protons that are moving around or electrons that are moving around. Um, so this Hall effect is used for determining the direction of current um, because you can measure the uh, uh, EMF and then that tells you the direction uh, that the uh, current is flowing and what's flowing is it electrons or uh, protons. Um, okay, and so um, what you can do, uh, there's an example here of the Hall effect um, being used to, to probe uh, different things and if you have an electron here and it's moving that way because of this current and then you put a magnetic field here you're going to uh, create a force down but then there's going to be an electric field that's generated um, by the separation of charge and if they perfectly balance out um, then you have the case where uh, the electric field strength um, which is equal to the EMF divided by the uh, length of the uh, conductor here so here's your EMF there's your length um, the EMF is equal to magnetic field strength times uh, the separation times the velocity um, of the moving charges. And um, if you balance that out, uh, these two charges here, blah, 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 then you get this expression for the EMF inside of a uh, um, uh, conductor inside of a magnetic field. Um, so here's an example calculating it for blood flow. You put um, uh, put a 0.1 Tesla magnetic field across a, an artery similar to this picture up here, and uh, and then what is the Hall EMF if the diameter is four millimeters and the average blood flow is 20 centimeters per second? So you just plug all that stuff in here, and you get uh, a very very tiny uh, EMF. Okay, so that's the Hall effect. which is the generation of a EMF when you put a conductor in uh, an external magnetic field. Okay, so now if you put a wire through uh, in between a magnetic field and you uh, flip on a current that goes through here, you're going to get a force that causes this uh, loop to fly out of here. Um, and that force is because um, the current is this way, so your current is that way, your magnetic field is... Um, point it that way, and so um, if you put your thumb and fingers in the right direction, you see your palm will go up, so that means the force will be up, um, because the plane here, um, the force is always perpendicular to that plane of the magnetic field and the current flow or the velocities. Okay, so um, uh, when you narrow it down, you get that the force on a current carrying wire is equal to the current times L times B times uh, the sine of theta. So I is the length of the wire that's actually inside the field. So if you have a magnetic field here and you've got a wire like that, well, this is the only part of the wire that you have to care about for the length uh, because it's the only part that's exposed to the magnetic field. Um, so that's you make, make sure you use the length of wire exposed to the magnetic field and then the angle between them like normal, and the force is always perpendicular to the plane of the motion. Um, but that's the quantity or the magnitude of the force on a wire inside a magnetic field is ILB uh, times the sine of the angle between the two things. Okay, so here's an example calculating what that is. Um, okay, so that's pretty simple. That's literally all it is. 22.8, um, you can have tor torque on a current loop. So let's say you uh, send torque or sorry, send current through a uh, square loop of wire you made that has some width and some length, okay? And uh, the question is, how much torque is it experiencing? And you remember that torque is, let's say you're trying to open a door and the hinge is over here, so the door is gonna rotate 
that way. And if you apply a force here versus a force here, this is a tiny torque. This is a big torque uh, because torque is the force you're applying times the distance to the force. So in this case, your distance is low. In this case, your distance is high. And so you can get a much bigger torque because it's force times distance. Well, the forces that we're applying here are from the magnetic field. Um, so the torques here are going to be the force that we're applying times, uh, for example, if this is the axis of rotation, then and that's the width, then this is W over 2, just half of that. So if our width of exposure is there, then there's our axis, then W over 2 is, times our force would be our torque. Um, and then you're going to get it from one direction, you're going to get it from the other direction, because one's going to push, one's going to pull, and then you end up with a net um, sum of them added together. Um, this is just an example of if the magnetic field's there, and you've got your current uh, coming in or out, and then you can calculate the force force that's caused this uh, current carrying wire. This wire is going to rotate um, to line up with the uh, magnetic field. Um, so this is just showing you the four different ways that the wire could be positioned and what the forces on them are going to be. And you can see once it gets lined up with the magnetic field, um, the ideal force, it should, it should eventually settle itself out to be in that configuration. Um, okay, so, but the torque, when you add it all up, let's say we have, uh, so it should be ILB sine theta, IAB sine theta, theta, theta um, where A is the area of your um, loop. So in this case, it'd be uh, length times W, and that would give you the area of your loop. But then, let's say you have um, uh, one loop. Uh, let me draw a better loop. One loop, and let's say you stack another loop on top of it, and another loop on top of it, and another loop. Your Each one is going to apply the same torque, so you end up um, caring about N here, however many loops you have. Uh, on your uh, uh, current carrying device, okay? Um, and that's how that works, and that's the torques. So it's come, some examples here are motors, um, the scales for, you know, we looked at one of these, the galvanometer, that's how the galvanometer works. The magnetic field with a coil of wire, you put the current through it, and it's going to experience that deflection, and that's how it makes a measurement. Okay, now uh, Ampere's law says that when you have a current carrying wire, you have this uniform uh, magnetic field that's generated, um, and the intensity of the magnetic field depends on the distance you are from the current carrying wire and its current. And right hand rule number two is as you point your thumb in the direction of the current and your fingers curl around it. So in this same picture, you'd have your thumb here and your fingers would curve around, uh, it's a ridiculous looking hand, but um, your fingers are curving around. Here's a fingernail. Oh, geez. Missing a couple of fingers. Uh, farm equipment accident. Okay, so um, the strength at any point, here, 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 wherever, outside of where a wire is, is this. Mu naught, this constant, which doesn't change, times the current that's flowing divided by 2 pi times the uh, distance you are away from the loop of wire. You put that in here, you can calculate what um, any magnetic field strength is, any current is, any distance you are from a wire, that type of stuff. Um, so if you've got a loop of wire, mu naught i over 2r will tell you the strength at the center of the loop, the way this all adds up. Okay. A solenoid, uh, what is a solenoid? A solenoid is a uh, loop of wire all hooked up to basically amplify the magnetic field, create a nice uniform magnetic field in the center of this thing. Um, that's the goal of a solenoid usually. And that, for a solenoid, is just mu naught ni, where n is the number of loops. Um, so it simplifies down there a little bit. Okay, um, if you've got two uh, uh, wires, both carrying currents, they're both going to generate magnetic fields, each with mu naught i over 2 pi r. And if they're a certain distance away, then they're going to feel a force depending on the direction of the, the current. And so um, you can get uh, the two wires to come towards each other, or you can get the two wires to repel each other depending on the direction of your uh, current flow. Um, and then we've got more examples of applications. So you have mv squared over r, and you can solve for the radius of a charged particle moving in a uh, um, 
uh, spectrometer, a mass spectrometer. So you send this charged particle out, and depending on the mass of it, the heavier it is, the less it's going to get curved, and the further away it's going to end up away. Um, so the uh, uh, velocity of this thing, we call it a velocity selector. So you set this equal QE equals QVB, charge cancels out, you get velocity of the particle is electric field over magnetic field. Okay, and then you've got the cathode ray tube, tubes, which is how old uh, this would be a TV screen over here, and you direct the electrons to draw your picture on the screen, which is pretty wild. Okay, MRIs, you do the same thing with, uh, put a person in a very strong magnetic field and flip it on and off, and then you end up uh, being able to see inside them based on the emissions from their uh, electric fields. Um, okay, bye.